Ok, hi Andy, how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm Irene from Koi Six Eight TV, and today I would love to ask you a couple of questions. Are you ready? Yes, yeah. So first of all, first thing first, uh, can you share about uh, yourself a little bit and tell us about what you guys are developing? What is your project right now? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. So my name is Andy. Um, I am currently the director of Asia at Frax Finance and the director of, of business development at IQ. Uh, I work for both projects. Um, at Frax Finance, we do stable coins, um, anything and anything in the DeFi realm from like lending markets, uh, LSDs. We have our own L2, uh, and we issue three different types of stable coins pegged to three different assets. And at IQ, we do everything like knowledge and education. Uh, we're an AI project, so we build out AI applications called like IQ GPT, which is basically like the chat GPT, but for blockchain and crypto knowledge. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, may I ask a little bit about your project, which is Frax Finance First? Uh, so um, can you share more detail about Frax Finance? What did you guys building in as a stablecoin? What is different from other stablecoin in the market right now? And what uh, people can can expect from that? Yeah. For sure, yeah. So at Frax Finance, uh, as mentioned before, we uh, issue three different types of stablecoins. So we have Frax, which is pegged to the US dollar. We have Frax ETH, which is pegged to Ethereum. And then we have uh, FPI called Frax Price Index, which is pegged to the CPI basket of goods. Um, so it's a flat coin. So we issue these three different types of stable coins because we believe that in the near future or like maybe a decade ahead, that these three assets are going to be the dominant assets in the world. Um, and then we build sub protocols around those stable coins to make sure the st stability mechanism is there and that there's like great utility such as lending markets. Uh, we have liquid staking derivatives. Uh, we have our own L2 that we recently launched, very exciting, called Fraxtal. Yeah. Um, so I guess we can go more into that about that. Uh, so Fraxtal is a, it's a L2 on EVM um, and it's on, it's on the OP stack. Yeah. So it's very easy for builders to come and build. And what's, what's really interesting is that we have a very unique incentivization structure where users and builders are actually able to earn, for the first time, earn more than the gas that they spend. Yeah. Um, so that's very exciting. So we, it was, it's very recent, it's pretty new, but we're, we're trying to scale things up there. Yeah. Um, so if there's any builders in Vietnam, <laughs> please uh, feel free to message us. I'm happy to talk to you uh, and love to have you guys on Fraxtal. Yeah, really um, informative, I guess. But um, I want to ask. Uh, I understand that you guys want to build more protocol on the uh, on the ecosystem. But why you choose um, layer two blockchain uh, modular, and what is uh, the opportunities and also challenges when you guys choose to build a, a layer two like that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the motivation for building our own L two really derived from how we see the end game of Frax. So we, I, I personally think that Fraxtal is like a big umbrella and then all the, you know, the lending markets and all our, our, our Frax ecosystem will be under it. Um, so we saw that as like a last, maybe, a, maybe not the last, but I, I think it's one of the last chapters. Um, so we do a lot of things in DeFi, right? So we thought creating our own L2 is going to make things better. Um, and then we're going to slowly migrate, you know, everything in the Frax ecosystem onto Fraxtal. Um, so yeah, very interesting stuff there. I guess in terms of challenges, um, for, for my personal challenge, I think the challenge is trying to bring the ecosystem growth. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also very exciting uh, because it's something that I haven't done before. Mm -hmm. And it allows me to talk to you know, more chains and more projects to mm -hmm. kind of work together. So one great thing about Frax, I think, is that we have this positive sum mindset where we don't try to compete with people, but we try to work with a bunch of you know, like minds and crypto native people to kind of help each other scale things up. Um, we think that in, or, in order for us to grow, the entire in industry and ecosystem has to grow as well. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, so move to a little bit about your other project with IQ, right? So uh, what can people, uh, retail users, and also projects, uh, developer can benefit from your project? Because I have heard that you guys are building an AI project, right? That is really trendy right now, yeah. So, very interesting story, I'll, I'll go back to it. Um, so, when I first started, I, it was six years ago, uh, I've been in the industry and I've been with the same project for six years. Uh, so when I first started, I had no knowledge in crypto and IQ was the first project that I started with. And uh, it's a, it's, it's, it started as off as the number one, like largest blockchain encyclopedia. So working there allowed me to learn as I was working. Um, 
And then we started to really look into AI, I think two years ago before this whole wave of AI. So we started looking at it and you know, we, the, the motivation was, hey, why don't we create something like ChatGPT because it changed our lives. Um, but for crypto and blockchain knowledge, because it's always growing, right? So we, we had this intensive data of thousands of pages on you know, tokens, uh, projects, uh, founders, exchanges, regulations, uh, glossary, etc. So we're like, you know, let's index this and make it easier for you know, accessible for people to use. And it caught a lot of attention uh, from different source providers. So we have on-chain and off-chain data from like, you know, Etherscan, DeFi, Llama, uh, the Associated Press. And um, one thing that's really cool is um, I went to Hong Kong and talked to Invest HK, which is like the Hong Kong government. Um, responsible for like startups and Web3 um, and they we kind of had the same vision so we they were our launch partner so in terms of like the educational side and for people to easily kind of ask simple questions and get answers um, we decided to create this out and we're still working on it and expanding on it um, and we also made a chatbot for that so um, retail users or projects um, are, are able to kind of integrate this into their community from Telegram to Discord. Uh, we support four languages as well. So again, I think it's a very noble approach and a noble project where we actually really care about the adoption and the scalability of the Web3 ecosystem, right? So our, our, our mission has always been to provide more knowledge and more easier way to kind of bridge the gap between you know whether you're just starting into this industry or if you're a professional looking at on-chain analytics. Um, so that was a motivation. That's very really inspiring. Can I use that right right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will use that right after this, okay? Yeah, just <laughs> just teach me, okay? For sure. Okay, so um, I have heard about two of your project. Uh, do you have any plan, any spe specific plan for both of them, or just uh, one or two of them? Just just share me, hint me, and can so I can see the potential of uh, those projects in the future. Yeah. Sure, yeah. On Fraxis side, I think we're trying to, like I said, work with a lot of different projects um, as well as bring them onto Fraxtal. So uh, I'm going to personally focus on the growth of Fraxtal ecosystem as well as, you know, getting our stablecoin onto different um, chains and, you know, creating yield over it or etc. So more utility for all of our um, three issuing, you know, stablecoins. Um, so just, I think right now for Frax, it's more about like focusing on growth and the retention and getting, you know, Frax to like out there, you know. Um, we want to eventually um, hear more about Fraxtal from different people and when we say Fraxtal they'll know eventually what it is and I believe that we'll get there because our team is awesome. <laughs> um, on IQ side, uh, we're building out some another AI tool that's really cool. It's, it's going to be called IQ Code. Um, so kind of cool because IQ Wiki, which is our wiki page, was meant to kind of give information to uh, you know, normal daily life users or traders or etc. Um, IQ GPT was made so that people doesn't, they don't have to read the whole page, they can just ask questions. Now we're doing something for uh, developers. So IQ Code is going to be the first AI tool for smart contracts. Um, so developers are able to, the first phase of it is that when you enter a smart contract, it audits it for you. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's going to have a drop down right. menu yeah, and show you like where is the vulnerability, how do you fix it, like what's wrong with it. Wow. The second phase of it is that you can enter a query, um, oh. kind of what kind of smart contract do you want to make, like you know, like create me a smart contract for whatever, whatever, wow. and it builds it out for you and it explains how to do it. So again, very educational and helpful. Um, we think this is going to be a game changer because I think uh, a month ago or something, Vitalik's top tweet was mm. actually, we need an AI tool that can help with vulnerabilities and yeah. that's exactly what we've been building out so it's pretty exciting yeah that's so cool um i, I see a lot of things coming you know, with your projects and guys just uh go to check their social right now because a lot of things going okay um so um just to grab up um uh, the last thing i want to ask is about our event today so what is your impression about GM Vietnam and why brought you here and what do you think this kind of event can have to grow the crypto blockchain community as well as the crypto adoption in Vietnam and also in the world? Yeah, yeah no, um, I've always heard great things about Vietnam as a country and, and the scene as well. Um, so I was super stoked and excited to come here and I'm honored that you guys will have me here to you know, speak and talk to people. Uh, so when I got here, I noticed that it's very builder heavy and you guys have brilliant minds and brilliant projects coming out. So it's really great to see that Vietnam is also working itself um, to get this adoption and all the regulations out, like, you know. So it, it's really exciting to see the growth. 
Um, I'm based in South Korea and we're also working on that as well. I've been to Thailand and then a lot of places and I think Vietnam is going to be a game changer in Asia as well. Um, so definitely I wanted to come out, check it out and see the people, um, see the space, see the industry and see the community and it, it, was, it was a great experience and I think GM Vietnam was definitely a great conference. I think you guys have done an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that and I hope that um, I think with your like your team, your uh, what are you building right now? You guys gonna rock all of those projects in the future, and all of them gonna be so successful in the future. And I can't wait to see all of that. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, one last thing, just say, uh, just look right in the camera and say, Xin ch uh, chào buổi sáng Việt Nam. We stand for GM Vietnam, okay? Yeah. Chào. Chào. Chào Vietnam. Okay. 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 Got it. So one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So one, two, three. Chào Vietnam. Chào Vietnam. Thank you.